title for today is that uh, you are infected. Uh, recently, Mercer staff has come to the fore as a, uh, a new threat on the horizon. Uh, and it is really not a new threat. Basically, uh, MRSA was supposedly developed by the use of uh, methicillin, and which it adapted to and created a new strain of staph. And it is a distinguishable strain of staph um, because it tests differently than the uh, regular Staphylococcus aureus, which was a problem. Uh, basically, we, we in our, our world had no uh, test facility for MRSA, but we now have uh, test facilities that have enabled us to find out that Staphylococcus aureus is probably endemic in the population, where a high percentage of people uh, that have things that are resistant, symptoms that are resistant to uh, normal uh, nutritional treatment, let alone uh, antibiotics and other medicinal uh, means, uh, have not produced good results or failed to reduce the symptoms and eliminate the problem. Now, <clears throat> in our practice, some 30 years ago, we uh, began with the practice of applied kinesiology and later studied uh, EAV with Dr. Vole, which is a electroderming, uh, electrodermal, uh, electroacupuncture type of treatment where we used homeopathics to uh, diagnose uh, in people which were not readily available to standard medical treatment. Uh, if, if they can't find antibodies in the blood or they can't find uh, bacteria that they can colonize, they're kind of stumped. Well, for all these 30 years we've been able to diagnose Epstein-Barr and later Hepatitis C. Uh, uh, lately, st staph, we've been able to diagnose strep. We now have staph, we now have super strep, and we have staph, and we have the MRSA, which is a super uh, staph. And in uh, looking at a large number of people in a short, num a short number of days, uh, we have found that MRSA staph is probably endemic in the population. And just doing brief research on what's out there and has been out there since 2000, 2002, 2003, 4, 5. Uh, they now have cases where the uh, MRSA staff has been awakened by simple procedures like the introduction of a pacemaker. And we have seen one case where this is actually so because the MRSA staff is at the site of the pacemaker insertion. So, we have been sort of in the closet because we can find all these organisms that traditional medicine can't find. And the explanation is that each organism has a, an energy signature. And these energy signatures were originally captured in homeopathic form in test kits. And we have been using these for 30 years and this is Epstein-Barr. Epstein-Barr. And these are actually in injectable ampules, which we have used uh, as diagnostic tools. You don't have to inject them. We just had to quantify them and classify them. One case comes to mind where this lady came in on a cane. She was a stockbroker. And she was diagnosed by a host of doctors with um, sympathetic dystrophy, neurosympathetic dystrophy. And we were able to diagnose with act this actual test kit. And they don't wear out, uh, they don't get moldy. <laughs> and um, we found that she had a high incidence of, of um, Epstein Barr in her nervous system, and particularly in the nerves to her legs. So we began to treat her nutritionally. And we used our amino acids and everything that she was deficient in, and high levels of uh, vitamin C in therapeutic quantities. And when she quit, she was able to walk with, in without her cane with just a little bit of uh, hesitation in her walk. This was 
totally missed by the medical profession because they have no tools to go that fine. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about bacteria that can hide in the body, and we recently came up with the word stealth. And guess what? Some of the great researchers in the world are using the same term, and they're using it for TB. TB is all over the world, and it's a particularly bad organism. It is one of the ones that we have not come up against. We have not found a active case of TB in our research, but we find tons of MRSA. And guess what? We now have three people using our nutritional antibiotic uh, protocol that have completely removed MRSA from their bodies. I mean, up to 2,000 dilutions, which is for practical purposes, gone, gone, gone. Most of the population uh, is infected with something. The uh, H, um, HIV has yielded to the nutritional uh, protocols. And um, Staphylococcus aureus was fairly easy. Staphylococcus MRSA aureus is a tougher organism. Uh, requiring uh, stronger antibiotics such as uh, vancomycin and there's a number of others. But when they're given in long treatments, six months, seven months, eight months, uh, as they are in tuberculosis, uh, they tend to lose their effectiveness if they haven't suppressed the, uh, the uh, tuberculosis. Now, Here's some stats here, or some, some information from uh, uh, latest research, uh, which was done by uh, Mac Micking and McKinney. And uh, they were carried out at the Rockefeller University Institute. TB largely leads an existence based on stealth, and so does MRSA. The ones that they're seeing in the hospital and dying uh, have uh, virtually no immune response to those. Uh, in 90% of those infected, it is not life-threatening because the bacteria are under biological house arrest by the immune system. This is called latent infection. Uh, they don't know what the relationship is of latent infection to active infections. And they say, oh, humbug, it's a latent infection. Well, people with latent infections do not feel sick, have no symptoms, and cannot spread TB to others. Well, this picture, this picture of the vast majority of those harboring the disease seems reassuring. It is misleading. The pathogen can switch from a latent state in any human host if that host's human system is weakened. And they go on, normal aging is part of it, da, da, da. but they don't say very often. And what comes trailing in like tail in Charlie is malnutrition. The last bloody thing they ever think of. They always think of heroic measures. They never think this poor cell is starving. 